Hello, you're welcome to Online Healing Crusade. We're so glad to have you. We believe the Lord has been blessing you through this program. And um, if you are joining us for the first time, this um, meeting, a crusade takes place every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. So we are inviting you again tomorrow and uh, every day until Jesus comes. There's a feast of fat things that God is um, providing for you. That's why God has brought you to come online. We believe it's not by accident. And I believe strongly tonight that God is going to do something great in your life. You know, when we have uh, crusades on ground, one day or two or three days in a week, uh, we have it as um, Believer's Day, Pastor's Day. And online now, we have just one day today, Sunday, for believers. And um, I believe God is going to speak to you. You know, there are a lot of things that believers pass through, the pastors pass through, that we are nobody to share with. But I believe that, that the word of the Lord will be coming prophetically to you. Just open your ears. Be a, a man of God, God has anointed him with uh, a teaching. He, he has a teaching grace, a prophetic teaching prophetic teaching and i believe that tonight something will drop in your ears to give you answer to that question in your heart to what you're thinking about you know at times when people are seated that his ministry is following his teaching and they are sick it's you that he's talking to the others never knew anything and i believe god is going to answer the deepest questions of your heart tonight in the name of the god knows god cares god knows what you're passing through that thing that you cannot tell anybody he knows and he has an answer for it and it's an answer of peace hallelujah if you bless you uh join me tonight to welcome the servants of the lord the evangelist me in this seven evening as he brings the word of the lord unto us again tonight from the throne of grace god bless you and stay connected Praise God. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life today. Uh, it's been a wonderful time and uh, God has been dealing with us uh, on a very uh, special note as we move on in the plan and purpose of God. Today, I want to share some things with you on the area of faith for ministry and for believers. Are you getting it? I believe God has the best for us this year, but we're going to work with God. We need faith to do that. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Okay? And I know as a Christian and also as a leader or minister, you will need the instrument of faith for your work. Let's start. Faith means to believe and to have assurance of something. The Amplified Bible defines faith as, using Hebrew 11 verse 1, it said, this is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. Of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses what the senses cannot conceptualize you believe it you know it and you are walking in the reality of it even when you can't see it physically but you believe in your heart that's faith faith is not synonymous with hope Hope is a desire of attitude of expectancy concerning things in the future. Faith is belief in something you cannot see, but have an assurance you already possess it. Hope is in the mind, but faith is in the heart or in the spirit. Faith is not the same as the mind over matter kind of concept. No, it's not just mind over matter which is taught by some religion. Mind over matter teaches that we can overcome all problems by using our mind and reason or our willpower. These teachings are man-centered. They are not God-centered. Relying on self and not on God. Mind over matter is not based on the word of God. Faith is God-centered, not man-centered. It is a gift of God, not something humans produce through the self-effort of their own mind. So faith is not something of your mind or your brain, okay? It's of the spirit and it's of your heart. There are three main reasons that faith towards God is required. Number one, it is necessary for our salvation. The first reason that faith towards God is important is that you cannot be saved without faith. 
Uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So we need faith to believe, even to start our Christian life. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. So our salvation can't come through except through faith in God. Though God make it available by grace to everyone, but we all need faith to be able to assess it. Number two, you cannot please God without faith. The second reason faith is important is that you cannot please God without it. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is a reward of them that diligently seek him. That's in Hebrew 11 verse 6. So we need, number one, it is necessary for our salvation. Number two, it is necessary to be able to please God. Number three, you cannot receive from God or walk with God or do the works of God without faith. Faith is a powerful key to receiving the promises of God and um, ministering the power of God. Jesus told his disciples they could not cast out a demon because of their unbelief. Matthew 17 verse 20. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hands and go yonder place. And it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So, if we are going to do any work for God in the realm of the supernatural, we will need faith in God to do that. Okay? Uh, the Bible reveals that there are various levels of faith. Jesus spoke of people who did not use their faith as be being faithless. So, Matthew 17, 17 talks about these are faithless. They don't use their faith at all. Another one, the Bible talks about he, he, people with little faith. That's Matthew 6.30. Matthew 6.30. Little faith. And to some, he said, those with great faith. Matthew 8.10. When he saw a man that was manifesting faith at a high level and says that you don't even need to come to my house. Just speak the word only and my servant will be made whole. He said, wow, what a great faith. Okay. The Bible teaches that each person has a certain amount of faith which is given to him as a gift from God. That's Romans chapter 12, verse 3. According as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So there is a measure of faith for every Christian as if God gives you a soft loan. This is faith for you to start your Christian life with. Are you getting it? So there is an equal level of faith for everybody, but faith can grow. Even the small level that you are given at the beginning, you, it may decrease to the extent that you had faith before, you don't have faith now. I say, these people have no faith. There is a low level of faith. There is no faith at all. There is little faith and there is faith. And then there is great faith. Okay? And there is exceedingly great one. Alright, let's continue. Um, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 says, Each believer must have some faith because it is through faith that we are saved. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, faith is a gift. Romans 10, 17 says so. It says, so faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is a gift from God. The Bible reveals exactly how to increase this wonderful gift we have been given. It is by hearing the word of God the more. Okay, you increase faith towards God through hearing the word of God. You must first hear the word of God in order to repent of sin and receive Jesus as your savior. You need faith. Then saving faith comes by hearing God's word. After you are saved, biblical teaching and preaching will continue to increase your faith. So you need to go to a place where you can keep hearing the word of God and increasing your faith. Even if you are a minister of the gospel, <clears throat> you need something that you are not just preaching out to people, but you are receiving message into yourself, whether by reading the Bible or listening to a message another person preach or watching a film or I mean a, a, a video of a message or conference that other people are teaching and you are listening. You are not just preaching now, you are listening. Because faith comes by hearing. Others, you've been preaching and others are hearing. Now you should sit down, somebody is preaching, you are hearing. Are you getting it? So as a minister of God, I will advise you that you have meetings that you are going, that is not you that is preaching there. It is others that are preaching who are higher ministers of God, and then you can sit down and learn from them. Then That will increase your faith. When you get back to your field, you'll be able to do much more than you were doing before because your faith has grown within that period. All right. <clears throat> the more you hear the word of God, the more your faith will increase. If you want to increase your faith for healing, then study the word of God about healing. Maso Kabila Tarata. Okay. Faith comes first. It is a gift of God. Works. What you do, your acts of faith, that's what we call work. 
and the test of whether or not your faith is real. James chapter 2, verse 17 to 18, it said, Even so faith, it, if it had not works, it is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy work, and I will show thee my faith by my work. <clears throat> this is why we often say that faith is a fact, but it is also an act. Hearing the word of God and acting in faith upon that word will help you to increase your faith without struggling. Okay? So it's not enough to just hear faith, hear the word of God that brings faith. It is also important that you use your faith. How do you use your faith? You apply faith in whatever you want to do. You are not just depending on your mind or your brain. You are acting solely based on the word of God as the foundation for what you want to do. It's a mistake to start looking at your body to see if you are healed. Healing starts in your spirit. God heals through your spirit. Even his words are spirit and they are life. We must worship him in spirit. This is why Satan wars against your spirit. That's what we call spiritual warfare. Because he knows that that is where your faith will come from. Okay? After you have appealed to God and accepted your healing by faith, act in faith upon God's promises. Faith moves and acts on the basis of God's word. Reason is troubled, excited, and nervous. When reason argues, faith stands steadfast. So reason makes people to argue because their mind is not agreeing with what the Bible is saying. So they keep arguing, they still asking questions and all that. But a man of faith just, if God says it, I believe it, that settles it. And it goes ahead. But a man of reason will say, how can you explain that to me? I'm not getting it very well. This thing that you are saying, are you sure it's really work? What about considering it with this? What about when you compare it with this? What's about when you join it with this other one? But our people have already said this. And even the doctor have said this other one. By the time you are listening like that, your faith will not work. <clears throat> faith does not have to argue, but it has to believe. When a request is made, according to the word of God, that the work is finished, even before it is visibly manifested, faith lives in the light of anticipated results. It does not cower in bondage to present circumstances. The size of our inheritance depends on how much land you stand upon or you walk on or you can claim. How much land can you claim? Can you stand upon? That is where your faith stature can be. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. Begin to speak words of faith. The words of our profession or confession. He's saying what God says. Hebrew 3 1. Repeating with your lips from your heart the things that God has said in His Word. Confess what Jesus did for you and what the Bible promises as a result of His finished work. That's what you confess. You don't keep confessing sin, sin, sin. Sin confession is for an unbeliever that is coming into the kingdom. But once you enter into the kingdom, what you confess is not just sin. Are you getting what I'm saying? You are confessing the righteousness of God you have in Christ Jesus. You are confessing your stand. You are confessing who you are in God. You are saying the same things that God has said. But I will say, the, the believer, he that believeth, shall, let the believer say so. What shall he say? What God has said is what you will say. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay? Confession states the facts that are written in the Bible. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. He acts on behalf of our confession. It is not a mind over matter or the perverted name it and claim it kind of idea. Faith does not wait to see, to believe, because faith comes by hearing, not seeing. When Jesus stood outside the tomb of Lazarus, he prayed, I thank you that you have heard me. He said this, even though Lazarus was still there, but he said, you have heard me. Confession is not denying reality, but meeting it head on with a profession of God's word. Faith is not an irrational act. It is the most rational act in the world. It is based on the word of God, the highest possible evidence of things not seen. So things that are forever settled in heaven on the basis of this word, that is where our faith lies. Confession of God's word, even if you have contrary feelings, confession is made to salvation with or without feeling. The same is true of healing. Confession is made unto healing too. Whether you feel so or you don't feel so, if the Bible says so, then you say it. You will overcome through the blood of Jesus and the word of your testimony. That's in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Three things that we use to overcome the devil. The word of our testimony, 
and then we love not our life to death, and then the power of the blood of Jesus. Okay. You do not need sympathy, suffering alongside to be healed, but you need substitution, suffering in the place of whatever you are going through. And Jesus has done that substitution for you. He became sin so that you that you are sin will become righteous. He became sick with your sickness so that you that you are sick will become healed. Are you getting what I'm saying? This was already done by Jesus. Negative confessions glorify Satan. When you tell of your troubles, you are giving a testimony to Satan's ability to get you into trouble. You are snared with the word of your mouth, says the Bible. That's in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. So, is your confession based on God's word or on your symptoms? The word declares healing. And then symptoms declare illness. Which one will you declare? Because the two cannot win until you support one. If your body is feeling, you are sick. But the word of God says you are healed. Or prayer has been offered for you for healing. And then you are still feeling otherwise. If you keep saying, I don't think I'm healed. The way I'm feeling now, the sickness is still much on my body. Okay, you have agreed with the sickness. But if you say, no, it doesn't matter the way I feel. Prayer has been offered for me. I am healed. The Bible says I'm healed. The pastor says I'm healed. The man of God prayed for me. I know I'm healed. You keep that in your mouth, your body will adjust to healing. Okay? As a part of your confession of faith, begin to praise God for healing. Jonah praised God for deliverance while he was in the belly of the fish. Hebrews 13, 5 speaks of sacrifices of praise. We are to praise him as we enter into his gate, not when we leave or after our petitions have been granted, as we are entering to make the request. We are already thanking. Okay? Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18 indicates that praises is the gate in the wall of salvation. Through praises, you can hang your own gates and then walk through it to claim the benefits of salvation. You will not confess that Jesus is your Lord and then act like an unbeliever. Do not confess that he is your healer and then act as if you are not healed. No word of God is devoid of power. When Peter was told to let down the net, he did not argue. He did not deny the fact that they had finished all night and they caught nothing. He acted on God's word in spite of their fruitless human effort. When you act in faith, you do not depend on your feeling. You may not feel like asking for prayer. You may not feel anything when you are being prayed for. And you may not even feel anything after the prayer. But your faith is based on the word of God says it. The man of God that prayed it, I believe it. And that becomes your possession. Do you want healing or feeling? Healing is better than feeling. You can be healed and never feel anything. Base your faith on the word of God and not on feeling. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. You do not need faith if you already feel healed. So you don't need to feel the healing when you receive the healing. It's after you have believed for healing that healing will manifest in the body. The word of God and faith are the senses by which a spiritual person is directed. The natural person works by natural senses. A spiritual person works by spiritual senses. When natural evidence conflicts with the word of God, walk by spiritual sense. Your natural senses may be convincing, but when God's word differs from them, then act on the word and forget about your senses. Are you getting what I'm saying? These are very profound uh, understanding that we need to be able to flow with God in the arena of faith more than anything else. Are you getting it? I just feel like loading you with all this today. Abraham's physical senses said that it was impossible for him to have a son at this age. Yet Abraham believed God. He acted as if what God had said would come to pass. Abraham did not consider his own body. If you read Romans chapter 4, the whole of chapter 4, not only verse 19. Do not consider the condition of your body. Instead, consider him who is the apostle of and the high priest of your profession. That's Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't look on the situation. Don't look unto the doctor. Look unto Jesus. It is not enough just to ignore your body. When God tells you to take off, he also tells you to put on. When he tells you to cast out dev demons, the empty void must be filled. When you bind, you are also to lose. The same pattern applies here. When you do not consider the symptoms in your body, you must focus on the attention, your attention on him and on his word. He said you are healed. The word says you are healed. Focus on that. People believe in the power of diseases with evidence. They believe in the symptoms the doctor tells them they will experience before they experience them. When it comes to healing, we say, I will never believe until I see it. 
Faith replies, you will never see it until you believe it. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. That's what the Bible said. David said, I have believed to see the salvation of the Lord. Psalm 27 verse 13. He did not say, I have to see before I will believe. He acted in faith before he saw the evidence. The word demands that you walk by faith. Senses demand that you walk by sight. So it is not that you deny the reality of the things that are seen, which is symptoms, but you focus instead on the things that are unseen, which is the spiritual aspect of your faith. What the word of God says, you may not see. What the spirit of God has ministered to you by the anointing, you may not see. But put your faith on it. Fear not, only believe. Okay? If God depends upon what you call faith, it will be in terrible trouble. It's not depending on who you are. It's not depending on what you possess. What gives you your confidence is the fact that he is not depending on your faith at all. It's depending on his own faith following through for you. Look at your hands. God is not depending on the physical strength of those hands to bring healing and deliverance to you. It's depending on the supernatural anointing flowing through your hand and your entire being to accomplish his work. It must be by God's faith. This is the only faith that does not fail. God said we should lay hand on the sick and they will recover. When we lay hand on the sick, we are not looking at how can this my hand go and heal somebody. No. It doesn't look as if hand laying on somebody can heal somebody. Just like if, if you greet somebody and you shake the hand of the person, it does not make the person to be healed. Are you getting what I'm saying? But the contact of hand bringing healing is actually based on the fact that that's what Jesus Christ said we should do. He said we shall lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. So for them to recover, it is not my problem. But I must lay my hand for God to see something to use. He wants to heal them. But he can't suddenly heal them from anywhere. He is going to heal them in answer to somebody's prayer. So I'm ready to pray the prayer of faith. The Bible says, if anyone sick among you, let them call the elders to pray for them. And when the elders pray for them, the prayer of faith shall save the sick or heal the sick. So when we pray, we are praying prayers of faith. We are not praying based on physical things. We pray in the name of Jesus and things do happen based on the fact that we are trusting the ability of God to make good what we have said. When we lay hand, our hand can heal, but God can heal. But when we have faith on what God has said, we lay the hand with the expectation that after the hand has been laid, now test yourself, you are healed. And then you suddenly find out the person is healed. Sure, he must be healed because God said, if I lay hand, he will heal them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, the, you see, it's, it's, it's like a bargain, uh, a contract. I have a part of the contract and then God has a part of the contract. God say, you go and help me lay your hand on those that are sick there. And I will go there and lay my hand on them. He said, when you lay hand on them, I will heal them. He didn't say, when you lay hand, ensure that they are healed by your hand. They can't be healed by my hand. They will be healed by his power. But his power will not have a place to contact them except through my hand. So when my hand touches them, that is contact that brings transfer. Electricity may be running through the cable, but there is a switch in your room that until you switch it off, the electricity will not come on. What is the purpose of that switch? That is what is going to bring the contact and transfer. That's a little wire link that when you switch off, it will separate from one another. When you switch on, it will join again. Once it joins, the two places that join positive and negative sparks the fire. So there is a run through of electricity to the place where you want the light, you want the fan, you want whatever. So power will start surging to the place. But if power has been in all those cables before you switch on, but if you don't switch on, you are not connecting it. So connection will come after there is a contact. When there is contact, then there will be transfer of power. So the same thing, when my hand contact the head of a sick person, and I pray in the name of Jesus, some forces are working now. He said, I should lay hand on the sick. He will make them to recover. No, okay? So I have laid the hand. Now he is to make them recover. The Bible also said that I should go out in his name. And as many of us that are going out in his name, when we pray in his name, he will back it up. Say, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. So when I have prayed, when I've gone out to preach, when I've laid hand on the sick, I'm doing my own part of the baggage. He will now come when I've done my own to do his own part. What is his own part? He will be the one to heal them. He will be the one to save them. But I must preach to them for them to be saved. So the same way, I have to lay hand, I have to minister about healing and then lay hand on the sick for them to be healed. Or stir up their faith on what I have preached for them to act out their faith. When they act it out, they can find themselves jumping off of their wheelchair. 
It's not me that heals them, but I'm the one that steered the spirit of God in them and speared, I mean, steer their faith to be able to grab what God has said. The moment they believe, they can receive. I will do whatever I can do to make them to believe. But I would like make them to believe under 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes message in a crusade. I will be hammering on what will develop their faith. I know faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God. So I must pack so much faith within the next 15 to 30 minutes that I'm going to preach to them. So quote a lot of scriptures, hammer a lot of word, explain something in a way that makes it easy for them to believe. After that, then I link them to God. God is now coming to come and heal you. That God is going to touch you now and heal you. Why? The word that I have preached has raised their faith. Their faith holding on to the ability of God. Then they will be expectant. That expectation will make manifestation to happen. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that is how men receive their miracles. So people get surprised. A lot of things do happen. Are you hearing me? So I pray that God's hand will reach unto you today. I want to pray with you. All that I've shared is just to help somebody to be a better minister of God. In whatever you are doing, applying your faith. But at the same time, if you are sick, I'm ready to pray with you. That's my job. I pray that God's hand is going to touch you. So you place your hand wherever you need the miracle of God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone here the sound of my voice from anywhere. And they need God. Either for salvation, save them, save their soul, bring them into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remove their name from the book of sinners and put their name in the book of life and let them have a new beginning from today. That they will, if anything happens, they die today, they're not going to go to hell. They're going to have a switch over from the kingdom of the devil to the kingdom of God, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Give them a new beginning from today in the name of Jesus. Grant them the power of go and sin no more in the name of Jesus. And for those who are not just um, an unbeliever, they are believers, but their life of faith is becoming very low. They are, they are leaking in their faith. They are not growing in faith. As the word of God comes today, they will be stirring in their spirit to get more into the word of God, to take more of that word per day. And then faith coming by hearing it, then as they hear, as they read, and they believe, and they hear, may their faith grow. To a higher level where they can be more useful to God and to themselves. And third level, those who are believers are ministers of God at the same time. And then they have not been working well with God because they are not applying their faith towards the things of God. They are using more of senses, more of story stories, more of emotion than actually getting to the supernatural that can be of help to the people. I pray you will help them today, their faith with Jacob. And then they will believe God more. And the people that are hearing them will have more things to believe God for. And then more glory will come to God. And the work of God will advance. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Until next week, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.